it's great to have you with us on this lovely sunny day. <laughs> to stay inside all the better. Welcome everyone. It's wonderful to have you with us for our second um, Alpha webinar. Um, we're just waiting for a few more people to join. Um, but just while you're waiting, if you wanted, what you can do, what we've been asking people to do on these webinars, is if you wanted to change your name just uh, to your first name and then whereabouts uh, in the country you're joining us from. Um, I've just done it. Uh, to do that, if you go to the picture of yourself and there's three dots uh, just in the top corner and you're able to rename yourself there. So we'll just uh, be waiting for a few more minutes uh, to start just while people continue to join us. Um, just to let you know, just as standard, we tend to mute everyone uh, just for the smooth running. But uh, down the bottom, you'll see a chat. Um, emoji and please do use the chat uh, during our webinars to ask questions, make any comments. It's really wonderful to, to have you with us. I hope um, people, as Tom mentioned in the chat, I hope people have a cup of tea or coffee with them and uh, maybe a snack as well. So you're nicely settled and nicely comfortable for today's webinar. Uh, it's really, really wonderful to have you with us. And um, we'll be beginning uh, very shortly. Um, we'll be starting with the video and then handing over to Amanda. Um, I just mentioned briefly, if you wanted, you could rename yourself just with your name and with the location uh, that you are in, um, just to give us a bit of a context of where everyone is. Um, I don't know if you've used uh, Zoom before, but down the bottom you'll see that there is a, a chat emoji, um, and so please do feel free to um, comment throughout the webinar, ask questions, We'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, there's also a button um, that says uh, participants. Uh, in that, you can actually sort of put your hand up or say yes or no, and um, go, go slower, go faster. 
we keep an eye on that throughout. So please do use those functions uh, throughout our webinar. But it's great to have you with us. Please do settle down, get comfortable, um, and we'll be starting very, very shortly. Uh, just as one thing for those that are here, just if you could, if you wanted to raise your hand, if you've done alpha before, it would just be great just to see those um, that, have, that have done alpha before. Well, that's great. It's really, really wonderful to have you with us. So we're going to begin now. Uh, just to say again, we tend to keep everyone uh, muted just throughout, just for the smooth running um, of this. There will be a time at the end for questions, so, so don't worry about that. There'll be time at the end for questions. And please do use the chat box throughout. And um, we'll start now, OK? Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strive to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, we'd be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Hi everyone, you're very welcome to our second Alpha webinar for Alpha Online. My name is Amanda O'Shea and I am the National Alpha Youth Coordinator for Ireland and I'm also uh, Head of Development here in Ireland. So we're just going to pray to get started. You're very welcome. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We love you and we thank you for how you love us. We thank you, Father, during this pandemic that your perfect love drives out fear. We thank you, Father, that during this pandemic that our churches can thrive. We thank you for creative ideas, for connectivity, and for community. And we offer today to you 
in Jesus' name. Amen. So you're very welcome. Um, today you can expect we're going to be talking about sharing the video and discussion groups. Last week we talked about how to prepare and how to begin. Please go back and watch that. We recorded that webinar. Um, it's on our website. Um, we, we're going to share that website with you at the end on our last slide, but it's at alphaireland.org. And then you want to go to the online section of our website. And there you can find all of these webinars, anything that I say today, um, and as everything has been recorded, these slides will be in the recording and you can go back and look at it all. So if you want to take notes, but if there's anything you think you've missed, please go back and, and have a look at them. The webinar will be one hour in total. We're going to be talking about how when you run off online, you should try to keep it at one hour. People tend to check out after an hour. Their attention span doesn't really go past that. So same for these webinars. You can expect to be with us today for one hour. So we should be finishing up by four o'clock. Um, and we will leave time for questions at the very end, but feel free on the chat function to go ahead and ask whatever questions you want. Beth and John are on the call. Um, and we talked about this last week as part of your team, just so you know who your team are. John Quinn is in the background and he is handling all the tech. So he's handling uh, what you see on your screen. He's moving that around. He's handling the sound that you hear and the videos. And he will be later handling uh, going into the breakout rooms as we get into that and how to do that. Uh, Beth is your host today, so feel free to ask her any questions. Um, and she's there to take care of you and to host you and to make you feel welcome. I hope you all got your snack. As Tom brought up uh, an alpha, we always start off with some food uh, and some time to chat. So next week, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit retreat. So, but today we're going to get straight into um, uh, the sharing the video and discussion groups. But for, before we do that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about alpha values. So uh, this is something that doesn't change when you uh, do alpha online. There should be a slide for that. Thank you. Yep. Last week we talked about that. Um, when uh, you do your alpha values, you want to think about this, um, your hospitality. So when you have somebody, you want to think about three, at least two to three people. Your person doing uh, the hosting can technically do the tech as well. Um, it is better though if you can have at least three people on the call so that one person can handle hosting, one can just present so that I'm completely free to just talk to you and explain things. Um, and then you have someone handling that behind the scenes tech. So in that hospitality, that makes people feel warm and feel welcome. Go ahead and ask people, even when you send the invites out, to bring their favorite snacks. So that hospitality is super important uh, online. What's great about it is we're going to talk to you today about how to share those alpha videos, their quality, as you could see at the beginning. Uh, we just shared a little bit about that. Um, but we're going to talk more on how to do that and drill down in that more. And we're going to talk more today about the discussion. Your discussion time on an alpha should be almost half your time. So we're going to recommend about 20 minutes. And we're going to talk about that in a minute of discussion, but it should be about half the time that you normally, uh, uh have an alpha. So if you've got, you know, an hour long call, leave at least 20 minutes for discussion, a little less there. Um, than, than half, but you want a good chunk of it to be your discussion. So that's super important because then people feel like that they're getting to actually explore faith and express their ideas and work through what they think about uh, the idea of God and um, who Jesus is. So we're just going to go back one slide. Sorry about this, John. And we're going to do a little icebreaker. Um, I'm all about icebreakers and having a little bit of fun. So today I want you to use that and your participants either raise your hand or if you want to physically raise your hand, Beth's going to be on the lookout for who raises their hand. But um, I'd like to know if somebody doesn't mind uh, participating. When was the last time you went to a Kaylee? And then I want you to rate your dancing on a scale of one to 10. So put up your hand. If you, when was the last time you went on a Kaylee? Go ahead, you can raise your hands, either physically raise your hands or put it up. Oh, I see, I see a few hands. Can you pick somebody for me, Beth? Um, ooh. 
Tanya. <laughs> Tanya. So Tanya, when was the last time you went to a Kaylee? Can you unmute yourself okay, Tanya? Um, in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> that long ago, oh my goodness. And you have to rate your dancing now on a scale of one to 10, Tanya. Oh, obviously it was 10, obviously. Oh, it was 10. Well, she's not, she's not modest at all. Well done. Well done. Um, so these, these kind of icebreakers are all in an alpha guide online. Everything that I'm talking to you about in these webinars, there is a step-by-step -step guide and you too can do icebreakers like a champ uh, with your group of people and have a bit of fun. It does break up the monotony of just talking on a webinar and having a bit of fun. Uh, I'd love to hear from one other person. Who else? When was the last time they went to a Kaylee? Another hand? Um, no, Declan has his hands up. Okay, Declan, can you unmute yourself? And when was the last time you were at a Kaylee, Declan? Oh, oh, apologies. It isn't Declan. I, I will unmute you though. <laughs> no. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> oh, you're definitely not Declan. <laughs> What's <It's an> issue? <laughs> no worries, no worries. What's no worries. So it would have been in the 80s and I was absolutely awful. I have zero coordination. <laughs> in the 80s. This is yeah. Ireland. You're supposed to go to these kids. You just not do it unless you're just forced oh, no. to as a youngin. <laughs> oh, and what's your own name? Share with us your own name. Beverly. 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 You're very welcome, Beverly. Thank you for joining us. And thanks for participating in our icebreaker. So we're going to go ahead and go and remind you, we talked about this last week. Um, and if you can mute yourselves, that'll help us on the call. Um, and then we will avoid any background noise. But there's three simple steps. If we could go to that slide, John. Three simple steps to running Alpha Online. Really, I'm gonna talk about lots of things and drill down on these simple steps, but you really just have to schedule the Zoom, you have to invite everyone, and then you have to host it. If you can think of it in those terms, it really helps take away the mystery, it really makes it more accessible, and really this is, uh, this is potentially going to be the way we connect with our communities for quite a while, so it'd be great. One of the things um, I'm learning about Zoom is that uh, I'm not uh, proficient. Everything I'm talking to you about, I'm, I'm not an expert on. I'm literally learning as I go. I'm literally today even learning some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you and talking about. My oldest daughter takes great, great pride in making fun of me because uh, a long time ago, probably about 10, 15 years ago, I used to tell her, don't ever stop keeping up with technology and knowing how to use it. Well, after I passed 40, I, I have to admit that I stopped keeping up <laughs> as quickly with technology uh, that I should have. So it is something that everyone can learn and do. It is accessible. Zoom is an accessible uh, thing to facilitate and use, but we're definitely not the experts. Definitely ask us some questions as we go along. John is on the call. He's going to be helping us out with some of those questions. I will be leaving lots of room for them. But just to help us think about this, uh, schedule your Zoom call, invite and host. But of course you have to set up that account and that's all in the first webinar. So we're not gonna go into that. But let's talk a little bit about sharing the video. So today we're gonna talk about sharing the video and discussion groups, which we're also highlighting breakout rooms. So online, in, if you've done Alpha Live, uh, you will have had a breakout, you would have had the discussion groups in smaller groups live in your room, but we're gonna use what's called breakout rooms. That's actually the title that Zoom uses. So first let's talk about sharing this video. So sharing the video, there's a couple of options that you can have. You can uh, add this link to your chat. So we're gonna actually put this link into our chat. Beth's gonna do that for you. Um, and that is our website. And it is the online part of our website. And if you go to Alpha Online, there is uh, all the talks are listed there. And there are literally links that you can click on. 
So when you're sharing your video for alpha, when you get to that point, after you've done your hospitality, you maybe run an icebreaker and you've made everybody feel comfortable and you want to share the video, this is just one way of doing it. You can actually get everybody to click on that link from the chat function and they can go to our website and there will be uh, the first talk. You can tell them which talk that you want them to go to and they'll click on it and they can sit there and watch it from their own and they're using their own internet. They're not, uh, you're not sharing it any other way. They're just clicking on it and looking at it and after they watch it, they come back um, and, and we'll talk about how you do those discussion groups. But that's just one way of sharing the video is them using their own internet. Okay, and we're gonna go to option two. So this is another way that you can share the video. Is you can actually download the video. And this is probably my preference, and it's what we did today, um, is to download the video and actually put it uh, in, have it ready to go. So when you download the video, you can, when you actually want to start your alpha, you're gonna be setting up your account, which we talked in the first webinar about how to do that under My Alpha. This is also on our webpage. This sets you up an account. This gives you access to all our resources. This gives you access to training videos for your team that you're gonna share with your team, but it gives you also a way to download those videos, okay? So when you download the videos, you'll have them on your hard drive, and that is a way then you can share your screen. I wouldn't stream them, so streaming your video would be clicking on the video on our website and then trying to share your screen. I wouldn't recommend this because the sound in the picture can get choppy. All right, so I wouldn't recommend streaming. I would recommend downloading it. So you wanna download the video. Um, you can do that under My Alpha on our webpage. All right, and then you're going to share screen. So that's what John is doing right now. When he shared his screen, at the bottom of your screen, there was a place that actually says, if everybody wants to take a look at it, it says share screen. It should be like a little green box. And if you're on an iPhone um, that I think Beverly is on, you, you would actually slide across and it gives you different options. As you slide your screen across, there'll be different options. So your chat window, your participants, all of that should be there. But um, at the bottom, if you're on a computer, at the bottom, it'll say share screen. And when you click on that, now this is ahead of time. Whoever is the host, or and you can make a co-host, they will uh, be, you can decide who can share their screen. So you can actually, in your settings, your Zoom settings before you start your call, decide who can actually share their screen. So that's what we've done is John set up this call and he made Beth a co-host and himself because Beth was in, helping people enter into the room. Um, that's something we talked about last week. You can have a waiting room and have people waiting with music like we did today and then have everybody come on to the call. But when you share that screen and you click on it at the bottom, there's a look, two little places that you can click on that says Zoom video optimization and share your computer sound. That's super important. People miss that when they share their screen and they think that they're sharing something, um, but they're sh then nobody can hear it. So what you can do um, is you'll click on share your screen and then you'll look at the bottom. It's in small print at the bottom. It'll say two little clicks. You wanna click Zoom video optimization and share the sound. That just makes the video uh, clear um, before you start sharing it and it makes sure that your uh, participants, your guests can, can hear it well as well. So that's super important. You can even ask people before you start sharing in the chat. You can say, if you can't hear, please put up your hand or please text in the chat. Please write to me and let me know. And see, that's why another reason to have a presenter and a host, your host is then able to identify that and look at that and say, okay, and then they can help them troubleshoot to make sure either the presenter is at fault or maybe the, the guest himself doesn't have something turned on. So then you can figure that out before you even start sharing. And then you start sharing. Again, make sure you download that video share your screen. When you share your screen, go ahead and tick. Now, once you've ticked it once so far, whenever I've been using Zoom, once I ticked the Zoom video optimization share sound once, it stayed ticked for all my future Zoom calls. I didn't have to tick it every single time I shared my screen. So that's really nice and handy um, and doesn't make me work harder. So we're going to actually show you what this looks like. So everything that we're talking about today, we're actually going to show you. So 
John is actually going to share an alpha video with you right now. He is arguably the most famous person in history. Over two billion people claim to follow him. That's one third of the world's population. He's represented in art and literature more than any other figure. Time magazine called him the most influential person who has ever lived. But who is Jesus? So that's just to give you a taster of the video. We're actually gonna go back to our slideshow. So he actually stopped sharing um, the slideshow that we were sharing. He's gonna go back to that slideshow now in order to show you the video. You can put your downloaded video into, if you decide to use like a PowerPoint or a Keynote, if you're on a Mac, uh, like we have here, you can actually import your videos into your, um, your slideshow. So that's something that you can do. Um, we're not gonna get in how you do that here, but it, it really is straightforward of dragging and dropping it in there. Um, sound as well, it, it should all move over if it's a video, so you don't have to worry about that. So we're just gonna, everybody take a breath and stretch for a second. Take a big stretch, very good. All right, we have another icebreaker coming. So as a child, so anybody can raise their hand, did you ever peek into a wrapped gift before you actually received it? And did you get caught? I want to hear from you. Did you, as a child, ever peek into a received gift? So Beth's gonna help me look for raised hands. You can either raise your hand on the video or you can put up your raised hand on the participants. Someone help me out here, anybody? Did you ever peek, oh, Someone raised their hand. You, you see, see I'm, I'm looking at Gerard. Like, well, go ahead and go with Gerard. <laughs> Gerard, raise your hand. You can unmute yourself and tell us about this uh, scandalous act of peeking <laughs> into your gift. Come on, yeah. Gerard. You can hear me okay, can you? I can hear yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, great, great. Um, well, I do remember um, back in the Santa days, I remember looking for the Santa presents in the attic and coming across a guitar that was lined up to be uh, to be mine uh, <laughs> on Christmas morning. So I kind of uh, cheated and it did actually kind of affect the anticipation a little bit, but that's sure. a little memory that I have anyway. Of, oh, I bet. Know, oh, I bet. Did you get caught? Did your parents know? Uh, I don't think so, no. I think I just kept it to myself. So. Ah, and ha did you, then you had to fake like in the morning that you got it, like your excitement? I had to show my excitement and make the most <laughs> of it, you know. So. Did, and they believed you? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think about it, I don't think I ever even told them, actually, you know, so, um, yeah. They obviously <laughs> believed you. Jane, Courtney, share yeah. that, that she did it as an adult. Jane, tell us more. What did you do? I do it every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I've been just really, really good at giving Christmas presents, and I never know how big he's going to go. So just so I don't look really mean compared to him, I have to keep an eye on, on what's coming in and what's been hidden. So it's, it's all for, for him really that I do. <laughs> That's hilarious, thank you, Jane. All right, so we're gonna move on now to the discussion, how to do this. So the first thing I wanna say about your discussion group is keeping good ratios. What do I mean by that? Um, keeping a good ratio has everything to do with how many people are on your call. So if you are um, on a call with only about eight people, then you could just manage the discussion right there with the group of people. But I would say after you reach eight people on a call, then I would use a function on here called a breakout room. Now, what's great about these breakout rooms is that you can do a lot of things in advance, which we're gonna show you in a minute. But I, I really think after one to eight is fine, but then after eight, and then of course, for every eight people after that, you need a host, you need someone to manage that breakout room, somebody to help manage those questions, just like you would if you were running an alpha. We're gonna break that down in just a minute on the next slide, but first, 
Um, the other thing that's super important right here is to copy and paste your discussion questions in the group chat. So in that My Alpha that I was telling you about where all the resources are available to you, um, you can uh, get all the discussion questions for each talk in advance. You can download them and then you can copy and paste them and put them into the group chat. When you get whisked away, which we're gonna show you how to do in a minute, into your breakout room, those questions remain in the group chat. So you don't have to get lost there, they'll be there, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. So keep good ratios, copy and paste your discussion questions, which you can get in the My Alpha part of our website, and then you can just have them there. The way to do that, I would suggest is have them like in a Word document or pages, depending on if you use Microsoft or Mac, have the discussion questions already on one of those documents and that's how you can copy and paste it over quickly into the group chat once you open up the phone call. Your host can do that for you. There's a few things that I've asked Beth to do as she's on the call today so that I don't have to worry about it while I'm presenting. Again, another reason to have somebody alongside of you. It's, it's more difficult to run alpha by yourself. Minimum of two, three is better and obviously even more depending on how many guests that you have. So the last thing here I know is, is something uh, a little different, but um, so before the call ends, um, there's a way, and you might not realize you can do this. Ask the participants if they wouldn't mind if you took a photo of the meeting, and then if they didn't mind you sharing that with us, the Alpha office, for us to post online. Now you only have to do it once. That's why Edward's email is up on this page. If you email edward at alphaireland.org, he's our communications and marketing uh, head for Alpha Ireland. And we love the story. So if you're running Alpha, we love to hear from you and how your Alpha is going. But even if you didn't mind, um, you don't have to do this every week. Just one week is enough. But ask your participants in advance. Ask if you, they didn't mind if you took their picture. There's a way to do that on here. And then um, you then would send that to edward at alphaireland.org. Um, it's optional, it's not required for running Alpha. It just helps us and to hear and see what's happening with Alpha Online and the world of Alpha Online. So we're going to the next slide. So in the discussion, um, you want breakout rooms. So this is really important. Here's a really good picture of what, where, this is in the Zoom settings. So before you can actually even see this inside the Zoom call, you actually need to go into your account management ahead of time. And in your account settings, you wanna to navigate to the breakout room option. So there's a breakout room option that you have to scroll down to. You're gonna click and tick it on. Um, and then you're allowed to assign participants to a breakout room. So that means, let's say Beth is a host in a breakout room. She's gonna lead that small group discussion. In advance, if I know who's coming on my alpha, I'm going to assign seven or eight people to her and that she would be in that same breakout room with them. And so you can assign them. And because in alpha, we like for the same people to be on uh, in the same room for discussion every week because that creates that continuity in these discussion groups, people are going on a journey of faith. They mightn't share with a larger group um, that they will potentially share in a much smaller group and trust gets built when you're in a smaller group. So we like to encourage people to keep the same groups every week and not move that around. Because when you set up your breakout rooms, there is a chance that you can just do it randomly every week. We don't encourage this or recommend it because you want that continuity of the same group with the same leader every time. So in advance of even getting on the call, you'll want to do this. You'll want to go into account management again. You wanna click on your account settings, navigate to the breakout room option, and then select on and tick, allow host to assign participants to the breakout room. So there you go, select breakout rooms, select number of rooms, assign guest rooms. And then lastly, there is a place that you can adjust the settings and you can read through those if, if they're needed, if you want to, that's just up to you. So I know I kind of flew through that, but we're actually gonna give you a taste of what it feels like to go to a breakout room. What's our time? So it is, yep, I have plenty of time to do this, but before we do, Beth is gonna put a question into the chat room 
So this is something like if you were copy and pasting your alpha questions into the chat, she is putting in a question now. So everyone, and we'll wait for Beth to pull that up. You have it in there, Beth? <laughs> What has your church or parish been going, doing since the pandemic hit? It's fine, I meant to say doing. What has your church or parish been doing since the pandemic hit? So that what we're looking for is we'd love you to discuss since you have a few minutes to do that before we do question and answers and top tips, um, is let you discuss for a couple of minutes, how have you been reaching out to your community? So what have you been doing since the pandemic hit to reach out to people? So John is actually going to send us all to breakout rooms to discuss that question. You'll be able to see that you can still see that question, but more importantly, you'll get to feel what it feels like going to a breakout room. Go ahead. We'll all be back going again. Yeah. Hi, Andrew, how are you? Yeah. Sorry about that. Hi, John. You well? I did something there and my screen went kind of blank and I clicked on something, so I lost. I that's see. okay, no, no, that's right. Everyone's, everyone else is gonna be coming back out in a few minutes. You were just ahead of time, Andrew. You are yes, on, you, all good, all good, Father Andy. Um, so yeah, basically you get the option to leave at the allotted time or beforehand, and you just chose to leave um, beforehand, but it gives people a 60 second time um, to, to leave. So they all start coming back right now. You'll start to see. Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome back yeah. everyone. <laughs> so that's what a breakout room feels like, being whisked away um, and, and taken to uh, a breakout room. Uh, and you as the host or whoever is hosting it has the ability, as John was doing, to kind of send little messages to the groups. Uh, and he's also, you could see that the question was there in the group chat in case you forget what you're discussing, as you can have them beside you as well as the leader, whatever works for you, you could use WhatsApp and do it that way. But um, definitely that's what it feels like, but you can set the timer. So we recommend leaving at least 20 minutes on those breakout rooms so that everybody has an opportunity to share. Um, we only got through two people even answering that question. Um, but I spent a lot of time, I guess, jibber and jabber, and so I took some of that time up. But that's what it feels like if you've never been in a breakout room. And you can already feel how it feels more intimate when you're in that smaller room, doesn't it? Just like if you're in a small group, it's much more intimate. Um, people feel more open and feel like they can chat and talk about their situation and pray together, which we'll talk about next week about in prayer ministry um, and how to use these breakout rooms. Again, anything we've shared today thus far is going to is recorded and it'll be on our website for you to obtain in case you forget anything we are very aware that today is probably our most tech heavy day we are trying to keep it uh, break it down into the smallest steps possible but everything i've shared is also in a handy pdf guide called a complete guide to alpha online which you can access on our web page as well um, so anything that you need um, anything that you've missed last week, go back and check it out. There's also an explainer video for how to set up Zoom. Um, so if you need help with that, but don't forget to contact our office. So if there's anything you feel stuck, don't feel stuck. Give us a call and let us help you. We want to see uh, you be able to reach your community too with Alpha. We, we, we think it's a great resource. So finally, we're just going to finish with these top tips and leave some time for some questions. Um, your, your internet connection in a time like this is actually quite important. You can, do, you can go to speedtest.net and check it. It'll tell you how fast your internet connection is. Um, if you're set up like in my house, uh, we have what's called these boosters because I live in a rural area, so my internet is not very strong. But you can go out and buy a booster, an internet booster, and it boosts your internet signal per room because I'm in this old farmhouse with big, thick walls and getting the signal to every room can be difficult and so we put these um, google kind of wi-fi points all throughout the house um, you don't have to go that far but we decided we're a big family we decided to do that 
and we might have multiple people online at the same time like I do right now my husband's upstairs doing an online course at the very time I'm doing this call so you can also pick that wherever you need the priority since I was presenting today I made myself priority for internet um, so uh, but my husband said last week that that was fine for him. He was still able to obtain his course online, no problem. So you can check all these. The other thing I mentioned earlier is to keep your alpha short and sweet. So that means you want to keep it to an hour um, and leave loads of time for discussion. People are gonna check out. They really can't last past that. Um, people are on Zoom all the time or in some form of communication online, uh, whether they're using another platform there are other platforms. We're not saying you have to use Zoom. It's just we found it to be an effective tool. There are other tools that you can definitely use for running Alpha online. Um, but do keep it short and sweet. You want to email more. It's, it's a way that you can stay in, in communication during this time in the pandemic because you're just not seeing people naturally in church or at meetings. You want to email more as that point of contact and check on people um, that may have missed that week. Being prepared. Um, hosting online is a different experience to hosting in person. Make sure your team is ready by ensuring that they have access to all the video files, discussion questions, and that they fully understand Zoom. So you'll want to do this first with them. You'll want to do some run-throughs beforehand. We do this before every webinar. We actually do a run-through. We write a script, and we make sure that we know exactly what we're trying to cover and communicate the best way that we can. And then you want to be aware. What do I mean by this? Churches have found that guests tend to feel more vulnerable online than in person. So you want to prepare your hosts so that they can expect this. So that hospitality piece is super important to help people feel comfortable. The breakout rooms help people feel comfortable to ask questions and really explore faith. So that's me as far as talking. Uh, we now want to invite all of you uh, to ask some questions. This last slide that is up is what I've been talking about throughout the webinar. It's, it looks just like that on that slide of my alpha. That's where you go to register. Don't forget to do that as your very first step when you wanna run an alpha online or an alpha period. Register that alpha and that gives you access to all the discussion questions, a leader's guide, training videos that you can, and you can give your whole team access to that my alpha uh, once you set it up. Um, and that's there on that web page listed there, www.ireland.alpha.org forward slash online. So if you have a question about anything, myself and John and Beth uh, are going to do our very best to answer it. We don't pretend. Oh, and Dan is there too, which is fabulous. So Dan, you, you're going to have to help us as well with these questions. If anybody has a question, we're going to do our best to answer it. So you can either raise your hand in the participants or you can just ask your question in chat or you can just put your hand up and we'll look for you. So we've got you in gallery view. We're all, we've all got eyes on. Beth is going to, I see Patty already up. So I'll go ahead and take Patty's question. And Beth, you can keep an eye out for other hands that get raised. Um, we'll start with Patty. Go ahead, Patty. Okay, thank you, Amanda. That has been excellent. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed it. I can only see four people at a time. So when somebody was chatting, I, I, can, is there a way that this, the, my, I can see the person chatting if they're, if they're number 12 on the list? And I can, whereas I can only see four. Yeah, yeah John, so go ahead. Paddy, what you have there is there's a few different ways that you can um, view what's going on. So in your screen there, you'll see um, the four people who are in there. And in the top right hand corner, you should be able to see something which says speaker view um, just beside enter full screen. So if you click speaker view, essentially what that will do is that will give you each person who's speaking at any given moment will be in a, in a big screen. And then you also have something that is called gallery view, um, which will allow you to kind of see um, a page of people at a time, which I think is probably about 20 people okay. um, on page at any given time. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you, John. Thanks, Patty. Um, Therese actually had a, a really good question um, in the chat from earlier, which I'm just going <laughs> to reiterate because I thought it'd be great for everyone. She was just asking, so do you stop Zoom while you're watching the videos? So you obviously start your call with Zoom and do um, you know, a bit of chat and your hospitality and your welcome. And then what's uh, best to do then? 
So when you start your, so ask me the question again so I can. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No. no, it was basically, do you stop Zoom? So you know, um, people go away to watch the videos. Okay, so you have two options there. You can either, um, I, and both options that I gave today, you keep Zoom running. So that'll depend. I know that we talked last week about whether you have a license or not with Zoom. So if you only have um, the free account with Zoom, you've only got 40 minutes. So I recommend, I highly recommend you go ahead and get a license and, and get yourself that unlimited use. It's not very expensive per month um, and per user. So I would definitely encourage you to do that. Otherwise you'll have to keep your alpha at 40 minutes, which isn't impossible to do. Um, it just means you'd have to tighten up your schedule quite a bit. But in both options I gave you, um, you can do that. I guess there is a third option um, there, Beth, that we didn't talk about where you, you send everybody the video, um, a link in an email and let them watch it. You tell everybody, Hey, at 7 30 PM on Monday night, watch the video. And then we'll join the call at eight o'clock, join the zoom. And then you could join the zoom technically then, and then break out into your breakout rooms. Um, you can do it that way. The yeah. only thing about doing it that way is you lose a bit of that, um, the coming together on with your hospitality that moving together as a group um, that's why we recommended these first two options of either um, sending the link in the group chat for while everybody's on zoom and letting them watch it together and then coming back for breakout room discussion or sharing the video uh, on your screen and then going into your breakout rooms john you have to add? yeah sorry just because i suppose technically if you did have it um for just the 40 minutes, you could technically break that up, have, you know, people come on. It's a little bit more difficult than that. You're essentially setting up two Zoom calls. You're setting mm -hmm. up one to welcome people in. And in that, you can then share the link, invite people to go off and have that conversation and then come back to the second uh, Zoom link, um, which would mean, therefore, you have kind of up to 80 minutes to be able to to um, share the, the Zoom call. Um, just concerned about that is that you kind of have different links and that kind of thing. It can kind of overcomplicate things, but it is possible to be done. Um, and, you know, especially if it's, if it's the free account that you have, it can absolutely be done that way. But just to keep in mind that you really need to kind of stay on top of the links and, you know, the correct links that people have at the correct times um, and then the links to the video and that kind of thing. Dan put up a really good tip there. He just said an additional tip for watching the videos as a group. If your video feed is, is having difficulties or you're, you're having internet trouble, you can ask all your participants to turn off their video feed and that gives more internet connection to your call. Um, and then you can turn them back on when you decide to do the breakout rooms. But just actually when you're sharing the video, you could actually ask everybody to turn off their video feed and that actually gives you a, a better signal. And that's a great tip. Thanks for that, Dan. Real quick, more questions? I, oh, can I jump in real quick, Amanda? Yes, of course. Sure. Um, so we just had uh, Amanda talking about the option of sending a link to people to watch it and then join together. If you are doing that, I just want to add that make sure you start out with everybody in that hospitality and that greeting and that welcoming function, because that's such a key to the alpha experience. Yeah. So even if it's just for a few minutes beforehand, meet and greet everyone, say hello, make sure they have their, their snack or their meal together, then send them off to watch the video and meet back up again, if that's your option. Just want to share that real quick. I agree. I think Dan is absolutely right. It's, it's essential that the steps in moving through hospitality, the talk and discussion are tried and true. And they really work in creating that experience because that's really what's going on. It's more of a culture that you're creating of community with people, isn't it? It's not just, you're not just another talk. You're not just another Bible study. This is alpha really is unique and that it creates a, a wonderful experience and a safe place for people to explore faith. So there, Beth, did you see someone else with a yep, question? Yeah, I think Richard and me. I think that's, oh, where is, sorry, Richard. <laughs> there you go. Oh. No, we still can't hear you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Me. This morning I did a little test and I successfully imported the video, which is great. But how do, how, how do I know that the guests can actually see and hear the video. Is there some means of getting that across? Yeah, John. Uh, go yeah, ahead. I think the, the key to that is um, obviously the, the best case is, you know, just kind of talking to people. So the, the group chat function is very helpful in that. It allows people to kind of give some feedback in it. But essentially you can rest assured that if you do 
select um, the share sound um, that it will it will happen and um, that it will definitely kind of be shared but obviously sometimes you can forget to click that little bit and you, you're watching the video and it sounds absolutely perfectly fine to you but you're not quite sure if it's the same for everyone so that's where i do think the idea of the group chat is very helpful you can just say look everybody um can you just make sure that, that you can hear this and feed this back to me and um, to go onto it you will experience absolutely everything when you're sharing it from your own computer um, whether or not it's going to be in broadcast. So that's, it's difficult for you to know if it's just yourself on it. So it's always good to be able to just ask the others. And you can even just show a little bit of it, stop it and just say, can everybody see and, and hear that? I think the, the thing to remember is that when you're running an alpha online, people will give you a bit more grace uh, than they would in person because the nature of tech is that it can kind of slip up sometimes. And um, yeah. it's really helpful to know that people will be patient with you. And I think they will help to understand and, and be understanding when you're trying to do something like that. And just a second question, when you uh, want to, when the alpha video finishes to come back into Zoom, is it simply a matter of pressing the uh, exit video uh, X? Yeah, well, the key thing to also make sure is that you stop share. So at the top of your screen, when you're sharing a video, um, the reality is that if you press the X, the, the video will no longer be sharing. But let's say whatever uh, program it is that you're sharing the video with might have like a, a home uh, page function or something that would still be up. So to ensure that uh, there's nothing else on the screen for everyone, try to go to the top of your screen and you will see that there is um, a thing along there which says stop share. It's like a red button. And if you click stop share, um, my daughter is just coming into the room right now, um, that if you click stop share, um, that will ensure that uh, you're not sharing anything anymore. And thank you. Beth, who's next? I'm Denise. Yes, from Waterford. Mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just wonder, would it be much simpler if people watch the video online at home? I, you mean, it, this is a, a huge technical for us to take it on a water where there are only two of us from the team who are interested in doing it. Okay. And it would be a lot to take on. That I, Maria is there and she's probably agreeing. You know, could people watch it at home and then come together as a group? I just would like people's views on that. They certainly can. We were just saying that you can certainly do that. You can certainly just email people the link, Denise, yeah. and let them watch it and then tell everybody what time you want to gather. Okay. Anne was just recommending two Zoom calls as an option if, if that's a less technical way, but still gives that welcoming atmosphere where you yeah. could start a Zoom call and just welcome everybody, ask everybody to get a snack handy, maybe run an icebreaker, and then you could end that Zoom call yeah. and tell everybody, go watch the video, and then come back in 30 minutes or an hour yeah. or whatever long, and then come back on the Zoom call and try to do your discussion. Yes, there's absolutely okay. lots of different ways you can do that without, without trying to share your video or share your screen. Certainly. We're just giving you yep. lots of different options, but de definitely try it. What works best for you is the way you should do it. The thing about Zoom is what's great about it, and it really is, and what I'm learning because I'm still really learning it, is the more you use it, the better you get at it. It's yep. like riding a bicycle, and you start to really feel more comfortable with all the bells and whistles that Teresa brought up in the chat, which was really helpful. Thank you, Teresa. She was just saying that um, you know, all the options like the breakout rooms and co-hosting might be available mm -hmm. with the free account, but the basic yeah. paid account is only 17 euros per month. And then you definitely get all the bells and whistles. Um, and then Aiden sent you a link there for how to access gallery view. So you can also just to say before we fi finish the call, if there's something somebody said, the bottom of your group chat, the three little dots there, if you click on that, there's an option at the top that says save chat. And it actually puts a file on your computer and it saves everything that was said in the chat so you don't have to remember it or write it down. You can just save it, put the little file on your computer, and then you have everything that was said in the chat. And again, we are recording the call. You can go back and look at it on our website. Somebody else, right. Beth? So um, I do see Jane. I know that Teresa did have her hand up. Teresa, was there something? Well, oh. ask you, because he understands it better. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was asked oh, and answered. I think she got it answered. Did she? Yep. Or 
Ethan. Yes. Hang on. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm muted and I, and I muted myself back. Um, I suppose myself and Teresa have been, been through this process and, and learning by disaster, so we can just pass out a few little tips <laughs> to, to, to save you all some pain. Um, so the first one there, what John was talking about, you know, if you only have the free accounts and uh, creating several meetings, we had that problem at the start. Now, just one lesson, you can reuse the same link. You don't need to create yes. a new link. Uh, so, I mean, I remember the first time everyone just disappeared, but everyone quickly figured out they just pressed the same link and everyone got back in again. But it tends to, it tends to kind of change, uh, kind of destroy the momentum a little bit. So we, we tried once, we, we planned it around the cup of tea, you know, we just decided everyone have a cup of tea now. We, when we, we, we ended about 35 minutes and everyone got back in. But I think, like you said, it's probably better in the long term to go licensed version. Second tip was just on sound. We had a lot of problems with sound that we figured out through a process of elimination and look that when you're sharing sound like you know a video or, or music or, or whatever it is, make sure everyone is muted because what can happen is if you're on if you're unmuted, if you're like talking and the sound is coming out through your speaker, it basically it creates this kind of a feedback loop which which basically causes distortion. So as soon as you, um, as hosts, as soon as you start something, just mute all. You have that option to mute everyone. So it's a, it's a good thing to learn. Again, learning the hard way. The last one I was a little bit hard to describe, and I'm sure I'm going to confuse everyone, including myself, as, as I try to describe this. So the hosts, or the person who's sharing the screen, which was, I think, John there, um, you need to be very conscious. He shares one screen. So like he might have five, five different things open and he shares one application. So if John happens to access anything else at the same time, what it, it appears is a gray box for everyone else. Uh, and it, it, it even happened just after John, it was once or twice where you saw a gray box appearing and eventually disappeared. So you need to be very conscious as host not to, and what myself and Tracy, we, we kind of, we said I did a tag team the last time in that um, she, scared, she, she, she shared and I did all everything else and she just stood back and didn't touch anything because even unmuting yourself, when you mute and unmute, you get a grey box in front. Um, so again, it's just little tips along the way. So that's, that's fantastic. Thank you, Aidan. Yeah. We're in our last minute. We want to try and get to Jane and then we'll finish up. Is that okay if everybody can hang on for Jane's question? And then I think if we have other questions, you can email me. Um, and we'll, we'll finish up here though with Jane's and we'll just pray and finish up. Okay, Jane? Mine's really small. It's just when um, your recommendation is that we keep in touch with people more via email in, in the week in between, what kind of things should we be emailing people? So the, I would send the link every week because just as you, you'll be using the same link, I, I, like I obviously I've been on, unfortunately and fortunately, Alpha Europe and Alpha Global has, has put together Zoom calls every week. And uh, some are for youth, some are for adult, and, and some are for the marriage course and all the different resources that we have. And it's very hard for me to go back in my email. I'm on a call every Friday for Christ in Youth, and, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, so where is that Zoom link? But if they send it to me every week, it's really easy for me to find it because it's newer in my email. Is that right? So it's, it's a newer uh, email. So I don't have to go so far back. So I would email people that link every single week, even if they have it. So that's one thing I would definitely send. But just encouragement, you could send out, you could ask people don't mind a prayer request being shared. That's a really lovely thing. And people can be praying um, for those prayer requests, things that get brought up in the group chat. Um, those are definitely things that could be um, shared. It helps. Yeah, build you could even yeah, building media and even giving like um, you know the theme for the next week that's coming up is yeah. another good way to help people kind of get a sense of it. Um, yeah. And you could also maybe share because at this moment in time the videos are being made available online. You could even share last week's video so people have a yeah. chance to kind of watch it again if they wanted to. Um, yeah. you know, th there's plenty of things um, that Scripture. you could try to put in. Yeah, yeah, you could share something that, you know, just anything to encourage people. I think that emailing is just that point of contact with people to make people feel encouraged. 
You know, yeah. uh, somebody on a call I'm on on Fridays has been texting me every week and I didn't know this youth worker very well, but it's just been such an encouragement every week. She's not only praying for me, but she's texting me, telling me what she's praying for me about and a scripture verse to encourage me what she felt God was saying to her. So that has been super encouraging and uplifting to me during this time. Um, there's, there's lots of different things there. So right, because you know yourself, people are in different places yeah. with their relationship with Jesus and you don't want to come on too full on with people who are literally just dipping their toe in the water so yeah. it's just to get the right tone absolutely absolutely great question Jane and thank you everyone for joining us today